Hello, my name is Dylan Jones, and I would like to welcome you to another Frontier Precision Tech Talk. Today's session will be an introduction to the Trimble Geo7X handheld. We will first cover the unboxing of the unit to show what's included. Second, we will cover the features of the Geo7X. Then I will do a quick demo to introduce the mobile operating system. And finally, I will navigate users to additional information on the Frontier Precision Mapping and GIS support website. So let's begin with the unboxing of our Geo7X. When you receive your package, you will see as when you open up the box, everything nicely packaged together. I'm going to start with the accessories, and the first thing you see on top will be your carry pouch. Uh, there's enough room in the carry pouch for your unit, a USB cable, a spare battery, and some external storage. Uh, when you open up the case, you'll find a shoulder strap, so it'll be easy to carry around when you're out in the field. The next thing that you will find is the quick start guide. I'm going to show you uh, how to get to the uh, user manual uh, later on in the video. And then you're provided with two screen guards. One of them will already be installed onto the device. And then some color coding stickers. And then you'll see here your USB 2.0 data cable for connecting to your PC. And then you're also provided with a nice adjustable Velcro hand strap, which just screws onto the device on the back. And then the next thing that you'll find here in this box is your lithium ion battery pack. Now this is a nice hot swappable battery pack. Uh, hot swappable meaning that you can swap batteries without powering off the device. And then here on the back you actually have this handy button uh, which you can push to get an LED indicator of how much charge you have on that battery. It's a pretty cool feature. And then of course you're going to need something to charge that battery. And in this box you'll find your AC power adapter. Um, it's just your standard uh, plug-in to the wall. Um, stretches about four to five feet in length and then you also have a pack of uh, international adapters so you can take this internationally and be able to uh, power your device and keep that charged and then underneath your device you're actually gonna find an extra stylus um, a stylus already comes docked into the device, but here you have one with a string to attach to your handheld. And then last but not least, we'll get into the handheld itself. You see here it comes with a little sticker on the screen that says charge before using, just to let you know that it is fresh out of the box. So now let's move into a quick rundown of the physical features of this handheld. On the front side here you have a 4.2 inch touch display screen with a screen protector provided. And then on the left side here you have your antenna connection port and a SIM card slot for AT&T and t and mobile data plans. CDMA is built in for Verizon data plans. On the front again the device has two hotkeys which are programmable to open applications. And then it has a microphone for recording sound. And to the right of that there is a home and power button and above that are three LED lights that indicate battery, satellite, and connectivity status. The GNSS antenna is located inside and at the top of the handheld. When collecting data, you will want to hold this part of the device over your point of interest. And toward the top right corner of the screen, they have built in a light sensor to automatically adjust the screen brightness. On the right side of the handheld, you will find an SD card slot for up to 32 gigabytes of removable storage. The device comes with 4 gigabytes of internal memory, but we do recommend external storage for larger projects and background imagery. On the back of the handheld, they have built a module connector for items such as a laser rangefinder, which screws into the unit. The software for the laser rangefinder is pre-installed, however, calibration is needed. You will see here that the unit comes with a stylus already docked into its port.
and at the top of the unit is a 5 megapixel camera for shooting images. I should also note that there is a barometer vent which improves the vertical and horizontal accuracy of positions. Be sure to keep these holes clean and free of obstructions. On the bottom of the handheld is where you will find the port for the battery pack. They have made these batteries easily swappable and long lasting. The typical charge time is less than about 4 hours, with the usage time lasting anywhere from 7 to 11 hours, and a standby time of about 50 days. The hole for plugging the power adapter in is found on the bottom of the battery. And finally, next to the battery is the mini USB port for connecting the device to a PC. If service or support is needed in the future, it is important to know where to find the device information. Here on the back you will see three numbers. The first is the MEID or Mobile Equipment Identifier, which is used when configuring the device with a Verizon data plan. The second and third numbers are the part number and serial number. I would like to do a quick introduction on the device's operating system and the on-screen functionality. On the screen shown here is what is called the home screen. You can navigate to a list of applications by pressing the Start button in the lower left hand corner. You can scroll through this list to find the application that you want to run. To get back to the home screen, all you have to do is press the Home icon. Let's go in and take a look at some of the settings. Let's tap the Start button and then the Settings icon. Here we have a list of settings that we can change. For example, the Bluetooth settings, or in the Systems folder, we can take a look at the system information, and if we press the Back button, we can take a look at the Connections folder and the Wireless Manager. As you can see, the Windows Mobile operating system is clean and very easy to use. Before using your new device, we always recommend downloading the user guide. Today I will show you how to access and download documentation for your new device. We can start first by going to the Trimble website. At the Trimble website, you will see the Support and Training tab. Under this tab, you will want to click Support A to Z. On this page, you have a list of all the Trimble products. We will click on G for Geo, and then scroll down to find Geo 7 Series. This is the Geo 7 Series home page. On this page, you will find anything from product information to an overview to the features and benefits, additional resources, and technical support. Under the technical support tab, you will find Geo Explorer series documentation. You will find the Geo 7 documentation under the link. Here, you can click on the Geo 7X Handheld User Guide, Trimble Geo 7 Range Finder Utility User Guide, and the Geo 7 Series Quick Start Guide. We recommend reading through the Handheld User Guide, and you can download that by clicking on the appropriate link. As a supplement to the user guide, we also recommend checking out the FPI Mapping website. That's fpimapping.com. Here you will find Frontier Precision's Mapping and GIS Support webpage. On this webpage you will be able to find product support and downloads for mapping and GIS software and hardware. For example, I have clicked on product support and downloads for Trimble mapping hardware. I am easily able to find the hardware that I need support with. 
for my instance, it'll be the Geo7X. This will take me to the Trimble Geo7X page where I can find support and downloads and videos uh, such as a webinar, a sensor calibration, information about the rangefinder and laser offsets, and a whole multitude of videos. And then below we'll find documentation. If we scroll back up to the top, we can find support and downloads for Trimble software. This could be GPS Pathfinder Office, TerraSync, TerraFlex, really you name it. If we head back to our homepage, you will see the latest updates from our blog. We usually post every one to two weeks on a new topic. This could be anywhere from a new press release to tech talks. And here on the tech talk screen, you will see uh, tutorials uh, to guide you through uh, common problems that we see. You can also find support and downloads for Windows Mobile Device Center on our webpage. You can find the link underneath the product support and downloads drop down. Here, all you need to do is follow the steps to download the software. It is important to note that you will need to install this software before connecting your device to your computer. This concludes today's Frontier Precision Tech Talk. We hope you found this video beneficial and will join us again next time. Thanks!